What's going on guys? So today is gonna to be a really interesting video. I am still out here at the E-Trailers corporate headquarters, worldwide headquarters. It's actually worth saying that because this is a really, really big setup they got going on out here. That said, I have a face that might be familiar to you now if you've seen some of the other videos. I got Jake with E-Trailer. Jake, you wanna take a second and uh, kinda of say what you do here at E-Trailer? I run the YouTube channel for eTrailer. We also make FAQ videos for you guys so that you know um, what you're doing a little bit more on your RV than you maybe did before you were watching a video. Um, it's a little bit different video style than our typical product videos. We try to answer questions that are hard, like hard water, or hot water heater questions, um, why something's not working questions. Um, just the questions that we get on our website, we try to regurgitate and answer them in a video. Very cool, and they do a really good job of it. If you guys haven't checked out eTrailer's YouTube channel, definitely check it out. I'll put a link in the description of the video. But today's video is actually, has really nothing to do with eTrailer other than the fact that you carry the parts that you're about to show. This is gonna be interesting. So this is a Homestead fifth wheel. Now, I'm really gonna, to, gonna leave it to you to explain the story behind the fifth wheel, and then we'll start from the front and work our way to the back and go over some of the things you've done. Because from a pricing perspective, this is gonna be very interesting. So, Jake, go ahead and take it away. First of all, kind of explain what you got, and I know you were talking about pricing and some of the accessories. Let's talk a little bit about that if you don't mind. Absolutely. Um, this is a 2007 StarCraft Homestead that I found online and it was online listed for 6500 but it needed a new roof so i ended up getting it for five thousand um, dollars and i knew it needed a lot of work but since we do a lot of that work here um, i kind of took it on as my own little project and now i've got it up and running uh, just the way that i want it absolutely and one thing you had mentioned is the things we're about to go over today such as this massive gen y gooseneck conversion that they have here with their really cool torque flex system up front um, the accessories alone that you've added, the aftermarket stuff on this RV, are valued at what compared to the actual price you paid? It is three times, the parts are three times the amount that I paid for other Vs. So, so $15,000 for the accessories that are on it and $5,000 for the trailer. So what's really cool about this is a lot of folks are like, well, that doesn't sound like the right value. That doesn't sound like you got a good deal. But the fact is that if you would have bought a new RV, you probably, let's just say a new RV with a similar floor plan. I don't know what it's like inside yet, but you would have paid, let's just say pre-COVID pricing of $45,000 maybe. And then you probably still would have added all these accessories to it. Absolutely. Or had to replace worn out accessories. Um, that's the kind of the approach I took to it is that I could start with an inexpensive base and then every part that I added to it was going to be brand new. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, it's just, it's pretty cool to see what you've done. So let's start from the front. I'll try to point out all the upgrades I see and uh, let me know if I'm hitting them. So first of all, let's start with the Gen Y. So do you like it? What do you love about this thing? Any regrets? What's, what's cool about it? What's not cool about it? I love the Gen Y, uh, the torsion flex head on it. Um, it's a, the kingpin replacement for a gooseneck in the bed of your truck. I like it because I don't have a fifth wheel trailer hitch taking up any space on the inside of my truck because I do haul goosenecks all the time too. Um, so I, I love it. Um, the towing at home, I use the Demco Recon and mm -hmm. the chucking was awful coming home from, and I brought it home from a nearby lake about two hours away. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, it was awful. So um, adding this to it is a night and day difference. Um, other than hills itself, I can't even tell the trailers behind me. Great. So you really feel as if you got a good, a good upgrade in terms of not just the product upgrade, but as far as the the, the feel towing it down the road. Yep, absolutely. It's the the only thing with this compared to something like the Reese Goose Box is that this has no adjustability. So the adjustability is going to be on you to be able to decide. Um, how you're loading your trailer because you do want at least 50% of the weight rating that is on this coupler itself um, to be engaged so that the yeah. um, these actually move yeah yeah so that the torsion head itself has optimal movement if you don't have hardly any tongue weight on this um, this isn't going to do you a whole lot of good same as if it's overloaded 
you're going to be bottomed out and it's going to be just as rough. Exactly. So again, yeah, a lot of this, and I showed this in a video when I used the Gen Y on, a, uh, on my gooseneck trailer, that if you don't have enough weight pressing down on this, it's just not going to engage the, the rubber bands that are in here to work. And it will feel rough because it's just not doing what it's designed to do because you're not putting enough pressure on it to engage it. Very cool. And by the way, is that your ram that you tow it with right there? Absolutely. Yep. So you want to talk about the year, make, model, engine type of your truck? So that is a 2013 Ram 2500 with a 5.7 liter Hemi in it. Um, I do have 35 inch by 1250 tires on it. Um, it does have a leveling kit in the front. I've got airbags on the back, BMW gooseneck hitch in the rear, um, and it tows this camper just fine. Great. All right, let's move down. So I see you got the, are, are these the, these aren't the JT strong arms. These are, which brace legs are these? Those are the Moride. Okay, so this is the Moride system. What do you think? I really like them. Um, they're, they're less to set up than the JT strong arm. Um, only in that you insert a couple of pins, one in each of the rods, and then it works just like a, um, a torsion system. So what happens is, is you, there's an inner pull and an outer pull. And what you do is you turn it once it's once you've got the poles locked together and it will lock the bottom of this leg to the top of that leg which is uh, bolted to the frame and then vice versa so what it does is it stabilizes what used to be a very very weak system because mm -hmm. every a lot of people know that once you get a jack leg out this far um, you're gonna have a lot of, of sway in the front yeah. of the camper but yeah. I can tell you, having this out about a foot and a half, the front of this camper is rock solid. Yeah. Another like kind of a ancillary perk to having this as well is if you have like a heavy windstorm coming or really bad weather, locking these in place can actually prevent your RV from collapsing sideways and breaking the legs. Absolutely. Very cool. Do you have anything in the front storage that uh, I can't see? Yes. These look like new locks too. Yep. Yep, I could tell you can pretty much spot those real quickly. So you got new locks. Yep, locks and magnets. So that um, on this year of RV, they I don't even think they had these magnets out yet. So that when I open up the door. Yep, you can hold it in place. Oh yeah, they were, using, place. they were using these plastic clips. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Okay, so Jake went and grabbed his keys. Let's see what you got in here and if I can identify it. So you have a Moride storage tray. Oh, that is so convenient, isn't it? Absolutely. Pulls out to 75% of the tray slide. So, um, gone are the days of having to crawl in a space like this, um, especially only being about 14 inches mm -hmm. tall. Um, I did lose about two or three inches on the bottom yep. of height, but... Um, but the convenience factor here, right? You'll find things to remove to put something like this. Is this a dual-sided tray, too? Does it come out the other Absolutely. side? Absolutely. Yep. That's it awesome. Out the other side, too. That is really cool. Okay, so we've seen the Gen Y, we've seen the cross bracing from Moride, we've seen the tray inside. Uh, stepping back, I see the bug guards. That's homemade right there. Yep, just some screening yep. from our old windows at home. Yeah, cheaper way of doing it and far less likely to come off. All right, so I see new wheels and tires here. These are Provider. I've told you guys, Provider actually makes a pretty good tire. Um, it's not what I would consider to be like a Michelin or a Goodyear or Continental, but it is certainly a good tire, and I've heard really good reviews about them. But I can see you also have Taskmaster uh, wheels on it as well. So we got that upgrade here. Also have the Moride SRE 4000. That is kind of near and dear to my heart. You guys may not remember, but we actually had installed this exact system on our Chaparral uh, courtesy of the folks over at Moride providing it a long time ago, along with the X-Brace reinforcement right there that actually stiffens up these center hangers right here. And the reason why is because these extend down so much further that torsionally you put a heavy load on the uh, mount right here. If you don't actually put that uh, brace in place, you can put a little bit too much stress on there and cause it to bend. That's why they include that. Okay, I don't think I'm missing anything else. Am I missing anything else on this side? Nope. Right here is good. So did you have a tire blowout at some point or was this before you bought it? I did. This was this was uh, one of my horror experiences and we actually made a video about it. Um, I bought this camper, as I said, really cheap. Um, and having worked at E-Trailer, I made the mistake in assuming because the person that I bought it from said that the tires were brand new, I assumed they were fine. Mm. Well, it turns out they were rated for 
Um, this camper at its max GVWR is 12,000 pounds, and each of those tires were only rated at 2,000 pounds a piece. Oh, wow. So way overloaded, drove around for two summers like that, and then was headed out for a trip. Luckily, I was just in the town um, next door to um, our headquarters here and had a blowout. So, um, yeah, I had to upgrade to something that's definitely rated for to tow, the, to tow this amount of weight. You know, and you bring up a good point too. So you may be looking at a used RV and the owner of that RV is like, you know what, if I stick some new looking tires on there, they may work. And they may have just found some cheap tires off Craigslist. They yep. may have just found some tires that maybe were used, but still look new, but might've been old. And it's always, always important to look at the load rating of your actual tire. Because if you just assume that the tire that's on there is gonna be fine, just like he said, he took it out several times, no problem. Yep until that tire decides to go out on you. Yep, and the, and the funny part about this trailer, and it is the diamond in the rough, it was purchased in 2007, or 2006, it was towed down to Mark Twain Lake in Missouri and never moved. Oh, wow. Till so. three years ago. So in um, 2019 is when I purchased it and it never moved. All the, the axles are still powder coated. Um, he had never moved it. He put a set of tires on it because they had dry rotted and popped. Wow. So were there any leaks inside when you got it? The roof did have quite a few leaks because, again, it was uh -huh. that original roof. Um, but as soon as I got it back here the next day, I jumped up there and put a new roof on so it. So how, how long was it sitting out there? It was from 2007 to 2019. Okay. So, shoot, you it, roughly 12 years it was just sitting out and you had a couple roof issues because it was sitting out and never taking Wow. So it just kind of goes yep. to show you that these things don't wear out as quickly as you think. Yep, and you all know. this damage is just from sitting in the sun. The yeah. other side doesn't look as bad as this side because this got most of the mm -hmm. sun. All right, so the steps look the same, unless you put some flip out steps in, which I'm assuming you did. I did. And then that handle is a absolutely new. Yep. It's like a Stromberg Carlson grab handle. That's certainly a new lock up here yep. as well. This is new. The awning uh, looks OEM. Awning is OEM. Yep. You can see that by the beautiful light blue color in it. Yep. And then we have the solid steps on here. Mm -hmm. For some reason, with all the Moride stuff, I figured you'd have the uh, step above, but you have the LCI solid steps on here. Yep. And we left the we left the original flip out steps strictly for the fact that we can show people the difference. Yeah. So we no. leave both sets of steps on. Well, and they're like there's no point in taking them out if you don't have to. You don't really need the weight reduction. All right. Mind if I hop in? Absolutely. Okay. He has the uh, nice American flag on the back. You know the cabinetry, everything in here is in really good shape. You had you had water leaks in here? Mm hmm Just in this in this front corner, up by the, the front corner of the couch, you can mm -hmm. see there's a little a little bit of swelling on that trim, a little swelling down mm -hmm. here on this corner. Um, but that was because the slide topper was ripped and was leaking, but there was wow. a slide topper. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, new faucet. I see that. Yep, new faucet. New sofa. That's different. Yep. Uh, I'd say new table, but that doesn't look new. That is the, or that, that is the original table. Um, I did pull the dinette out because uh, me and my friends are all uh, too big to fit in what they thought was an appropriate size in 2007. Gotcha. Now the stove looks new. The stove is actually still factory. That's factory. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's that's actually in really great shape. Uh, I'm going to guess the microwave's new. Microwave it, is factory also. What? Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm missing a couple of them here. It's just in really good shape. The cabinetry, though, is in really, really good shape. I like that you got a, a nice path to get through here, too, even with the slide in. Mm -hmm. This looks like a 12-volt refrigerator. That is a residential refrigerator. Residential. Apartment size. I um, fabricated the top cabinet doors. Okay. Um, to be able to fit, I had to take one shelf out, but I was able to cut, flip the hinges, and that slid right into place. Very cool. Um, the reason I went with that over an RV-style fridge is because I never camp without shore power. And if you open that up, you'll see the sheer size difference between that and a oh yeah um, typical rv fridge that would fit in that opening no that's true seems like some of the newer 12 volt fridges would actually kind of rival it too yep so Absolutely. very nice and i think everchill you guys carry everchill right mm -hmm. yeah everchill would probably drop right in there all right let's check out the bedroom 
So I guess you close this wall off if you want to isolate yourself from the shower, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is this was designed to be a couples camper, but if there are guests, you can pull those uh, two accordion curtains mm -hmm. and separate the bed from the uh, bathroom and the shower itself. Very cool. And open. Can I put the shower? Yeah. Very nice, and it's a nice spacious shower too. And then toilet is going to be in here i imagine mm -hmm. that is cool though they give you your own little toilet room yeah. a lot of rvs just aren't doing that i added a max air vent to the bathroom mm -hmm. and above the bed um the above the bed was just a cover and we added a max air vent up there and then the bathroom for more ventilation very cool well this is pretty awesome man i mean that i mean considering you know you put a lot of upgrades in it and this is the thing i like the vast majority of the upgrades you did to this are related to towing safety. Yep. You know, you got things that you've done that enhance just the safety of it when you're going down the road. The wheels and tires, the suspension in the center, the Gen Y hitch up front. Anything in the back that we need to look at? This, we just have the uh, e-trailer RV bumper cargo carrier. Reinforced, um, so... You guys reinforce the connections here, right? Mine is not reinforced only for the fact that uh, mine is actually welded to the uh, frame of the RV with a big piece of uh, C-channel. You might be able to see it over here a little bit better. Okay. But there's a half inch piece of angle iron welded to that. Oh and yeah. There's a whole That's... reinforced hitch under there. So yeah, definitely. Um, Very good. Definitely need that if you're going to put that much weight on the back. Very cool. These look like LED lights. Looks like they've been added, right? Mm -hmm. Very nice. A lot of cool, thoughtful upgrades, honestly. And this is kind of, oh, wait, hold on. Is that a on-demand water heater? It is. That so is got, by far my favorite upgrade. Really? And then you got a smart plug. Mm -hmm. So tell me what's going on here. Smart plug is just a, an easier way to connect to your RV. I used to have a, um, a pull-out cord. Mm -hmm. It had 30 feet of cable piled up inside there. Well, the problem I had with that is that if I put the cord back in when it was wet, um, that rubber would smell on the inside yeah. of the camper. Um, and this is a better alternative than the twist style because the twist style, the threads can get um, mismatched and then you're not actually securing it properly. Um, this with the uh, quick lock, have the cable in here. So while you're digging that out, this is something that somebody could typically just replace on their RV. You guys carry the cord, the plug, everything for? Yep, absolutely. You just take off, whether you have the pull-out style like I had, um, or you have the twist lock style um, that most RVs come with, <clears throat> this, this will just mount right into place. You unbolt your old one, you make the same connections on the back of the smart plug, and um, it's as easy as pushing it in place. Well, that is really cool. Did they make that in a 50 amp too? Absolutely. Oh, I'm sensing an upgrade. That is really cool. It has a blue LED light here to show when you're, um, when you've got power. It's like a Tesla charger. Yep. Very, very cool. Well, Jake, I really appreciate it. You know, one of the really awesome aspects of being out here is the fact that, you know, typically if I'm doing a walk around with somebody, I'm sometimes explaining to them what they have on their RV. But Jake and everyone out here is like, oh, look what I did, and this is why I did it, and look what it improved. I mean, just the knowledge that these folks have out here is, is pretty phenomenal. It's really cool to be able to walk around and him say, okay, I put this because of this reason, and this is exactly how it works, and this is what I had to do. Seems like everyone out here takes pride in being, I don't want to say an expert all the time, but very knowledgeable on what they're doing yep. and you definitely show it so really appreciate it jake thank you for giving us a tour of your homestead by Not starcraft super cool and you've done some really awesome things to it and you saved a lot of money over buying something new and here's the the main thing would you trust towing this thing across the country absolutely there's a, there's something really big a lot of people with brand new rvs may not trust towing it across the country. And there's a lot yep. to be said about that. Because I know it inside and out because I've worked on it. Yep, yep, and that's a big thing. So if you're willing to put the time into working on an RV and understanding what its limitations are, what you can and can't do, what you should and shouldn't do, you can really have something that's very reliable. The manufacturers sometimes are just selling you a shell. It's, it's up to you if you want to make that shell better than what it is. But things are so expensive right now, this is a better option for a lot of people. And it's the best option nowadays, maybe than it might have been five or 10 years ago. Yep. Very cool. Jake, thanks again for your time. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.